so now PewDiePie is racist. This is a world. This is a world premiere. This is a world. Hey y'all, welcome to another food for thought. Today, I'm just gonna like have my Tim having some Roy Boss tea right now, trying to chill out. It's you know, it's a nice day. The sky is kind of blue. Probably gonna get out and spend some time out in the park with. Jack, who was feeling a little under the weather last week, and so that's one of the reasons why I didn't make a video yesterday, because I was just kind of here dealing with Jack. I also teach on Mondays and Wednesdays. Y'all know my whole business. Y'all gonna know my whole business by the time this is out. Y'all gonna be knocking on my door before this is over, I'm sure. Anyway, we got through uh, Hurricane Irma, and Florida was, you know, pretty much smashed, not smashed flat, but um, to see some of those shots of Miami with they said three foot streams running down the, the main drag in Miami was, you know, pretty, reminded me a lot of, you know, when Hurricane Sandy struck in Brooklyn and suddenly, you know, here we are in a major city dealing with, you know, flooding. Who thinks something like that is going to happen? Something interesting, during Hurricane Sandy, we had all of the like evangelists coming out and talking about, you know, how hurricanes and floods will punish the wicked, but they were strangely silent when those hurricanes struck Texas and Florida. And, you know, I just thought that was kind of interesting that they were so not present at that time. Anyway, talking about the hurricane, there was a great interview on Amy Goodman on Democracy Now! with Elizabeth Colbert, who has written an article recently in The New Yorker that I'll include a link to, or at least some information on about in the, uh, in the description box below, but really talking about the way that it is very difficult for people to call out the connection between these storms and global warming, but that it's the consensus in the scientific community that these are the types of storms that we can expect to see with the continued changing of the climate. Later on, on Democracy Now! yesterday, there was an interview with someone talking about the disappearance of certain parasites and the impact that that is going to be having based on climate change. We're going to see things like, you know, lice and worms and other pest disappearing, but uh, it might not be a very good thing for us. Foot Soldier! Foot Soldier not very happy in a recent video talking about the fact that videos are being demonetized and videos are actually losing the capability for people to leave comments and likes and dislikes. Videos basically losing their functionality on the YouTube platform. Now, I want to feel bad for Foot Soldier, but it's the same thing that's happening to everyone. But one thing that I do want to call out that Foot Soldier did in his video that I thought was not very useful and and that is blaming this phenomenon that we see happening on certain platforms, specifically on YouTube, on the left. Like the left are the group of people who want to see us not able to post videos. I mean, for example, if you consider me someone from the left, my videos are also being demonetized and losing their functionality. Foot Soldier has more than once talked to me about the divisiveness of using certain types of language or framing things in certain ways to make it impossible for people to work together to deal with the compelling issues, the things that are really affecting our world. Well, Foot Soldier, you should maybe take a cue from yourself and stop being divisive and blaming this on the left or blaming it on the right and just seeing that this is something that is happening and if we're going to deal with it, we have to deal with it together. Or you can just suck it up and learn how to get your message past the censors like any good revolutionary would do. So PewDiePie is is a racist now. So it came out that PewDiePie was caught on a live stream, you know, calling his, you know, basically talking to the game and calling it, you know, stupid nigger or something like that. I don't know what the whole point of it was, but now he's being called out as a racist. And I just think that it might be making too much of this one particular individual. I think if we keep focusing on the behavior of individuals like Felix or or Fully Raw Christina even, people who make stupid mistakes and do things that can be construed as racist or bring up racial anxiety or whatever, um, to keep focusing on is, is to keep 
um, thinking that racism is about people not liking each other or people being careless in your be in their behavior. And that's not what racism is about. Racism is about particular policies and structures that are in place that disproportionately affect others based on the color of their skin, right? A lot of these policies were instituted or are based on attitudes that came out of the development of race as a social control formation, right? It was meant to keep white people and black people from working together. And so these policies harken back to the days when it was legal to own someone. So the remnants of racism that we see played out or manifesting in everyday life, like use of the word nigger or someone doing blackface because they either don't know or intend to be offensive, those aren't the things that I think we need to be focusing on. Certainly making it more uncomfortable for people to talk about race isn't helping the situation. And that's not to say that there's a right way and a wrong way to talk about race, but it's just something that we have to get into the common practice of doing because it comes up in our lives. So yeah, I think that Felix PewDiePie probably does harbor a lot of racist thoughts. He probably does have a lot of insensitivity to people who have gone through certain struggles in the world. But he probably also doesn't give it that much thought because he doesn't have to. I think that there's also a little bit of sadism in it. It's great when we have somebody that we can suddenly focus all of our anger and aggression towards. It's understandable, but it doesn't make it constructive. I think the best thing to do in a case like that is tell the person what they did, let them apologize, and then move on. And if they refuse to apologize, then we still move on. They're not that important. I'm sure some people are gonna be all over me for saying that, but then again, how much energy do you want to expend on talking about the N-word, and how much energy do you wanna expend on actually making some positive changes in the world around you? It's not gonna prevent greenhouse gases from being released into the atmosphere. It's not gonna stop bombs from being dropped in places like Yemen and Afghanistan and Syria. It's not gonna prevent 56 billion land animals from being slaughtered this year. And no, I don't wanna deny people's feelings about these things, but I think it is possible for us to have these feelings and still try to get some work done. Anyway, that's it for this video. Like it if you like it. Share, comment, subscribe. This is Reg signing off. Love yourself. Peace. And I love myself. The world is a ghetto. Big guns and